Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to JSpeak. Today we talk about gear hype. And then I'm also going to answer a question because apparently I forgot to address who actually opened for Jimmy Eat World when I saw him in Pittsburgh. So the openers for the Jimmy Eat World show was a band called Microwave from Atlanta. And the other one was the Hotel Year. I think I'm saying it right. Um, they used to be called the Hotel Year and then changed their name. So but they both played open for Jimmy when I saw him in Pittsburgh. As far as those two bands go, Microwave's a four piece, two guitar players. Uh, the drummer was awesome. Big heavy hitter played with conviction. I mean, the guy just beat the crap out of the drums. I mean, it wasn't like offensive beating the crap out of the drums, but he was just a really good player. Hit really solid. Didn't miss a beat. The vocals were not loud enough the rest of the music so it kind of sounded like the guy had marbles in his mouth and then when everything would quiet down they ended a few songs with just the singer playing his guitar and vocals and he would do vocal runs and they were great so the guy can actually sing but i couldn't hear him through the pa uh the hotelier similar experience but the drummer wasn't as heavy of a hitter as the microwave drummer and what that ended up doing was the guitars then were totally up front and you couldn't make out hardly anything else as far as gear again it was another four piece the singer in the hotelier played bass uh the other two guitar players rotated between strats the one who used the Tele Deluxe. The other one basically stuck to Stratocasters. But those guitars specifically were so upfront and so loud that it was really hard to even hear what the bass was doing at times. That singer was a good front man. He, he was funny. The microwave guy really didn't talk that much, but they basically had maybe 20, 25 minutes. And they blazed through the set. The Hotel Lear had a little bit more time. You could tell they were a little more professional, been around a longer. Good musicians. That singer could sing too. But again, the guitars were so loud, I couldn't hear the vocals. So that kind of sucked. I'll tell you what, I'm probably gonna pick up um, a couple of these guys' records just because I thought they sounded good. But I listened to a couple videos on YouTube and things like that, and the bands were good. The sound sucked. So it happens, right? Okay, so the gear hype thing. This is something that drives me nuts because I'm guilty of this too, right? You talk up stuff on the forums, you check out YouTube videos, everyone gets all excited about the new piece of gear coming out. Get your hands on it, and it's crap. Just crap. No, I'm just kidding. Doesn't happen all the time, but in all seriousness, what made me think of this was the Marshall Origin. When Nam came out, they talked about the Origin coming out, and there was a couple sound clips, and everyone's freaking out because it's supposed to be a throwback to Marshall's Origin days, and the amp is supposed to be some fantastic, I don't know if people expect blues breakers or what they expected, but there's like a hundred plus pages on the gear page, and the amp didn't even come out yet. As you know, I got one. I think you get a wide variety of, you know, distorted tones there, 70s type stuff. If you want classic rock and roll, it kind of fits the bill, but if you want high gain monsters, man, it's not there. You know, with MIDI controls and all this other stuff available, having a single channel amp isn't as practical anymore as it was back in the day. And back in the day, everything, the requirements were different for guitar players. They just don't make stuff the same way anymore. And that's a good thing, and it's also a bad thing. But it's expectations, right? So everyone hypes up this item and your expectations are just through the roof. And you end up getting your hands on it and it's not, well, quite frankly, right? It's disappointing. But you were listening to, you know, I don't know, me describe it. A bunch of dudes on the gear page describe it or the Telecaster forum or the Marshall forum or whatever it is. You get really excited. You get your coupon code, you go buy it, shows up, everyone's happy. You unbox it, you plug it in. You know, it's, it's funny because you, you, I don't care if it's a guitar, a pedal, an amp. I don't know. It can be a cable, but you hear the difference. <laughs> you hit your first chord and you're like, whoa, like the heavens have opened and there's light. You know, that kind of thing. And other times you hit it and you're like, what the f swear word was everybody talking about? Everyone has a tendency to like talk this stuff up and then it comes out and then people just f swear word and hate it. Just hate it. <laughs> doesn't matter what it is. There's always the naysayers, everyone, you know, there's people that buy it, return it. There's other people that talk so much forward and they never even touch the amp or the guitar or the pedal. They just never touch that piece of gear and they talk so much crap. It's unbelievable to me. So again, you get all this hype and then they, they listen to one YouTube video and they make all their judgments off of that. And one reason I make the videos I do, regardless of whether you like them or not, is to just show the piece of gear in a different light. I'm not Pete Thorne. 
I'm not freaking Slash. I don't try to be. I don't want to be. I mean, yeah. Do I wish I was better? Absolutely. But I practice and I put in my time. You know, I get better. But the point is, is that I'm going to use it differently than Slash is going to use it. I'm going to use it differently than freaking Chris Shiflet's going to use it. I think some people just want to be entertained and not actually hear something different. Because skill level doesn't matter in videos and it has nothing to do with hype. If you're gonna make your opinion based off of one piece of information, you are missing out on a lot of things, and that's not just with gear, it's in life. You need to experience different things to see if said thing lives up to the expectation of the hype that you've already built up in your mind. I don't know where that rank came from, but yeah, gear hype, man is just, it's an interesting sword. You know, as guitar players, I think we get bored and we think that next piece of gear is gonna make us better and it doesn't necessarily make us better. It could provide that sound in our head and then we feel at home, which is awesome because it is a long journey. If you just like to fiddle with gear and compare different amps or guitars, it's kind of like what I like to do. There's nothing wrong with that. If you have the means to do it, then do it. If you have to eat, Baloney on hand for two years to do that, I would not suggest that. But if you've got the means or you trade or whatever it is you do and you can do it and you can try the gear, great. But if you're going to give honest opinions about it and how to use it and kind of put up a demo, then great. But play the gear, man. Play it. Because you're not adding any value to the discussion if you've never played it. You're just hyping something or unhyping it. Is that a thing? Can you unhype something? But you can be a swear word. I mean, plenty of those around. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. Cure hype is real. Bang on that. We should start a new hashtag. Um, you can really know something is to get in your hands and play it. And I'll close with that. Just get it in your hands and try it. Stop talking about it. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great week. Many more videos to come. Don't miss one sub.